Talofa, and a blessed good morning. On behalf of His Lordship, Bishop Peter Brown, our parish rector, Reverend Father Sefo Tupola, I welcome and thank you again for joining us in spirit and watching our Sunday Eucharistic celebration today with our international community from the Holy Family Cathedral. Today is the feast of the Ascension of the Lord. Men of Galilee, why gaze in wonders at the heavens? This Jesus whom you saw ascending into heaven will return as you saw him go. Alleluia. As we continue to observe the Code Blue Declaration, please check the latest news on the Diocese of Samoa Pango Pango website or our Facebook page. In the meantime, please continue to watch our Sunday Mass services online until further notice. Please keep our bishop, bishop, priest, deacons, and catechists and our Eucharistic ministers in your prayers for their efforts to bring the Holy Communions to your home every Sunday now. Many thanks to those of you who are using our diocese PayPal account or dropping off your Sunday offertory or sacrificial gift to your respective parish office. May the Lord bless you and your family abundantly for your generosity. As people of God, let us come together in spirit to honor and celebrate his presence on the ascension, ascension of the Lord's Sunday. Let us open our hearts and our minds to the Holy Spirit. Our celebrant this morning is Most Reverend Bishop Peter Brown, wishing you all a blessed and safe Sunday. Please join us in our opening hymn and welcoming our celebrant. Please stand. grateful hearts, <clears throat> let us now open this opportunity to celebrate this great feast in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Good morning everyone. As Larry has welcomed us in the beginning of our Eucharist this morning, we come together in a special way to celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. And we know we celebrate this day as a preparation for Pentecost, that Jesus had to return to his Father so that we could receive the gift of the Spirit. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you all for the great sacrifice that you are making. I know all of you would like to return to our beautiful church and our churches throughout our Diocese of American Samoa and throughout the world. But you make this sacrifice in order that we might be safe from the coronavirus. So I thank you for this gift of your sacrifice that you make uh, every Sunday 
uh, during this difficult time for us in the world. And so let us prepare our hearts and our minds for what we are about to do. Prepare our hearts to open so we can hear the Word of God and we can also receive the Eucharist, uh, the bread of life that helps us to cope with our sacrifices that we are making in our daily life. So let us now ask the Lord for his loving forgiveness when we have not welcomed the Lord into our life by singing together our prayer of contrition. And may Almighty God forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us join together in praise by singing the Gloria. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where Jesus has gone before in glory, we are called to follow in hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, 
He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered it, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the officiants. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached them and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this day when we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, what does it mean? When you hear that Jesus ascended into heaven, what does it mean to you? I have a little story to tell you about a very poor family <clears throat> who lived in the mountains of Northern Carolina. They were farmers, but very poor. And the family name, they were called carpenters, the carpenter family. They were very poor farmers, so poor that the children were not able to go to school. Then one day the oldest boy, he had his very first trip into the city and he was so impressed by what he saw, he asked his dad, could he go to school there? And his dad allowed him to go to school, and he was a very good student. He went to college and eventually became a doctor. But he did not want to 
practice in the big city. He went home to his port village and he looked after the poor farmers of his town. He lived and worked over above a grocery store and on the street there was a sign that said Dr. Carpenter is upstairs and so the people would know where to go. So he lived like this right until he was 82. He died when he was 82 years old. And obviously the people of the village of his town were very unhappy and sad that he died. And so what they put on his memorial stone on his tomb was, and I thought it was very clever, what they put on his tomb was, Dr. Carpenter is upstairs. He was in heaven. But you know, when we, as I said in the beginning, when we think about Jesus ascending into heaven, what does it mean for us? It's not an easy idea for us to grasp. Where did he go? Did he go up there somewhere? Is he living somewhere behind the planet of Pluto? Is he up there in some place in space? Where did he go? What does it, and also, more importantly, what does it mean for me? What does this day mean for me and my faith? Remember last Sunday I was talking to you how important it is for us to understand our history, especially our God history. Because when we know our history, we know better our own faith. God created us, and God gave us his only son. But to understand the meaning of the ascension, we need also to try and understand the Jewish way of thinking about heaven and about our world, earth because we do not think like they do. We come from a different culture. We come from a different philosophy. The way we think in the Western world is based on Greek philosophy, Plato. We think in terms of heaven as a separate place that we go to when we die from our place here on earth, a separate place, like earth is here and heaven is up there somewhere. But the Jewish people who gave us our history do not think in this way of separation at all. That's our Western way of thinking of, about place. Yes, our world is where we live, and heaven is where God lives, but they are not separate places. You don't leave one to go to the other, in the way Jewish people think. But rather, they overlap each other. The kingdom, our kingdom, and the kingdom of God overlap. They are not separate places. So then when God's kingdom is part of our kingdom, it transfigures our world and makes it a better place. You know, you think, just think for a moment, what we often say, The kingdom of God is not something that's up here, but we are living the kingdom of God here. How can we say that? Because Jesus said he would never leave us. The spirit of Jesus is with you and me. So we enjoy, we are part of God's kingdom now. It's not something that comes later in our life. And also, you think of the prayer that we say every Sunday. Listen to the words, the words of the Our Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Thy kingdom come, God's kingdom come, and it will be done on earth, our kingdom, as it is in God's kingdom in heaven. The Our Father is a prayer that prays that we will be one with God. Not that we somehow, when we die, we float off to a different state, to a different place. No, that's a Western way of thinking. This very beautiful idea that comes from the Jewish culture and the Jewish faith is that our kingdom and God's kingdom, they overlap with each other. If they overlap with each other, then God's kingdom influences us. So when we come to Pentecost, it is just another, it's another section of what I'm talking, another part, another extension of what I'm talking about. It's God's same plan. The Spirit comes because the two places overlap, God's kingdom and our kingdom. And that's why Jesus is with us in his spirit. That's why we receive the spirit. It is through the ascension, the kingdom of man becomes closer to the kingdom of God. And what are these, what's the gift of the spirit? Think of us here on Sunday. What do we do? We celebrate the gift of the Eucharist. What's the Eucharist? The Eucharist is God's kingdom made very clear to us when we receive the Eucharist in ourselves. God's kingdom is with us. We receive him every Sunday. That heaven is not something way off in space. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he did not go to another place. But rather, we know that we are part of his kingdom. I was thinking of other ways in which we can see that these two places are overlapping and they influence each other. You know, when we sing at church, we say, may our voices be one with theirs. Who's theirs? May our voices be one with theirs in heaven. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, if... If Patelli is telling you, he wants to say, oh, you know, the international community, they sung so beautifully, just like angels. I hope so today. But do you see what I mean? We, we move away from this idea of our way of thinking that somehow heaven is up there in a different place and we're down here and that when you die, this you will go up to this place. It's not what it's not what, what we know and understand the meaning of how we relate to God's kingdom from our own kingdom here on earth. And this therefore helps us to understand better what our task is, what's our job as church. If we are baptized Catholic Christians, what is our task? What has God called us to do? And why the question? May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Our task is to make God's kingdom happen in your life, in your faith, in your family, and all the people that you know and love, and those you don't know, that you do by example. All we have to do is look again at our first reading, the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had ascended into heaven, there are two angels. The disciples are standing there looking up at heaven. Looking up, it doesn't say heaven. It says looking up to the sky. And the two angels ask, Why are you standing there looking up to the sky? You can hear in their voices, Why are you being so stupid? He's not up there in the sky somewhere. but rather he is one with us. And the angels say, and he will return in the same way. Now go and do as he did. Go and do what he did. That's the task that Jesus gives us. I'm going to the Father. I will return. I will be with you forever. 
our two kingdoms will be united as one. And your job, as I have asked you, is to make God's kingdom happen around you. And I remind you, as we come to an end of my words, Jesus reminded us at the end of the gospel last Sunday when he said, Go and do what I have done. And also, you will do better things than, than I have done. A great challenge to us all, not only to follow what he did, but actually we can even do better. Why can we do better? Because he is with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now, please, to respond to the Word of God as we stand and pray together our prayer of faith. We believe in one God. Let us now place our needs and our petitions before our loving God that as we believe in his kingdom, his kingdom with us, let us now ask him for our needs, for our church, and for our families. As we celebrate the ascension of our holy Lord into heaven, we pray for our holy father, Pope Francis, Bishop Peter Brown, and all of our priests that through the witness to the risen Lord, that they may continue to preach his gospel of love and peace in confidence and faith. We pray to the Lord. The Lord our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world as she seeks to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. May we be given every gift we need to show the love and generosity of God to those whom we meet and work with. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, especially our healthcare workers and the first responders. For all who are unable to stay home, but must work to provide for their families, may God continue to protect them and give them good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us gathered in our homes or wherever we are watching this Mass, that we may find comfort in the Lord when our hearts are troubled and extend comfort to others whose hearts are also in trouble. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all missionaries here in American Samoa and throughout the world. May God help them boldly announce the good news and sustain their spirit as they help to build the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray. <clears throat> we pray for all those who are sick or suffering from pain. May the risen Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we look towards the gift of Pentecost and where we will be reminded of your gift of the Spirit, we ask that you hear these prayers that we place before you, especially those that are within our hearts. We ask this in your loving name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may accept to God the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may raise up to the heavenly realms of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. 
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, the mighty and eternal God for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory he conquered sin and death ascended, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels glaze in wonder mediator between God and man judge of the world and Lord of hosts he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state but that we, his members, might be confident of the following where he, the head and founder, has gone before. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with your angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we, pr we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the people of God, wherever they may be. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us please stand and pray together that special prayer that Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who allow us and those on earth to celebrate these divine mysteries, especially the gift of the Eucharist that we have enjoyed. Grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Particularly like to thank uh, our international community uh, for leading us in our Eucharist this morning. And uh, also to recognize again uh, 684 Media for the great um, support that they give us for our continuing online masses as we go through this time. Remember I said at the beginning of Mass that it is your sacrifice that will enable us to come back to our churches more quickly. That you observe the regulations that we will be able to keep this virus at bay and once we have done that then we can quickly come back to the churches that we love. So let us pray for that. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gift of courage the, the, for, to help us to, to bear with patience these difficult times as we look forward to the season of Pentecost. So again, we thank you for your participation at home. We thank God for his blessing to be able, for us to be able to join together with you in your house together with your family. As we continue with this new week, let us praise and thank our loving Father for his great blessings for us in our daily life. May he bless us, may he bless your families. Let us please bow our heads to ask for God's blessing. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you in this new week in His holy name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.